This time on Pole Barn Garage, I show you how to paint a car for $65, how to tow your trailer with it, and much, much more. So let's get started and take it from the top. I'm back out here with my brother Cody. We have the converted LTD Roadster. You know, it's a rare option, and uh, we have a mission for it. However, before we perform that mission, which is a surprise, uh, I already mentioned it. We got to make this wrong master cylinder work on this car, because I I'm not buying any more stuff for this car. So this is what we have to work with. We must make brakes. Somehow. Somehow. And we must have tires that will not kill us. These will. There's our uh, main objective right here. This rusty thing that resembles a master cylinder. I guess step one is pull that off and see where we go from there. Odds that that comes off. I'm going to go with None. one out of ten. Ooh. Oh. Okay, well, we're both wrong because that just popped right loose. Really? It yeah. actually worked? Yeah, it actually worked. Is that three sixteenths? Yeah. Yeah. Will our luck continue? Oh! Hey, that's, uh, that's pretty gross. I do have to say, I like the Roadster aspect it better is. than the convertible. Well, yeah. I was pleased and it made sense when that was pointed out. You. Uh, As mentioned before, the problem here is that the new master cylinder has ports on the wrong side. If we just conveniently move these to there. That's working way better than I thought it was going it to. It actually worked really well. And then we just have to cut the end of that off and put the correct tube nut on. And Yeah, this one we may not have to. This one might go right in. I think that one will work as yeah. is. Rebuild that booster real quick. Oh, let me get my finger in there. Mm. Whoa. Machining? Machining, yeah. Test fitting of the new master cylinder. Well, there's actually more room than I thought. No, it's not as, it's not really not that bad. No, I think. The front one's kind of a bitch, but. Yeah, but I think we, we don't can care. get that in there. That's rear brakes, they don't mm -hmm. do anything anyway. I think we put that line on first. Actually, I think we put both lines on first. Yes, and, and then, then install. install. We need a tubing cutter, a deburring tool, and I have a new flare tool to show off. How does it work? I have no clue. Special punch grease. Oh, ruins my plans for dinner. Oh. It says do not eat. Oh, shit. Hey, look, <laughs> directions. Giving me the reins of this by myself. I'm for giving a few you minutes. the reins of the operation for a few oh. minutes. We're gonna lose the shot for sure. Oh man, it's gone. Cut this out. Mm-hmm. Made up the line a little bit. Do you guys care at all about your paint on your car? Don't put any brake stuff on your car. Brake fluid and paint are not good friends. So the problem is the flare tool needs oh an inch or so, but I gotta be able to get the flare nut on behind it. See if I can get this a little straighter. A little bit snug. Nothing big. There we go. Okay. Well, while you finish that up, I'm gonna put a trunk floor in it. Did it just fall out as you were driving, or did you just force it out? Well, I put a 12-gallon boat tank in it and then filled it up. So... Oh my... I... Look how bloated this is. That is... <laughs> well, that, that just normal? ups the performance. Pressure. It builds pressure, so you have more. It's for the, the starts after it sits for a while. But this I, floor is substantially worse than the last time I saw it. Well, I think a lot of it just kind of left. You know, <laughs> it removed itself. Like, it the whole perimeter is gone. I'm gonna go from that frame rail section to here, and just try to put something in there. Ah, uh, that will not fit on top of the package tray. I you think. know our patented hood supports for a square body? Yeah, two by fours. Boom. Two two by fours two, two would by take fours. care of this. Is there anything There's, left? This side. That side's pretty good. This side there is some. I got it. I got it. Hey, dude, you gotta watch the trunk support. Sorry. Jeez. I'm not used to these high-end cars that we work on. It's probably on this sticker. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> must find wood before the sun sets. Here the whole time. Landscape timbers. Oh, perfect. These are heavy duty. Hell yeah. All right. Squished. Squished. We're here almost for the big reveal here. Will it look better than every flare I've ever made on this channel ever? Butthole? Yeah, it does not smell good. 
That has a weird. What is the special increase? <laughs> that looks really good. Wow. That did really good, and that was really easy. That thing kicks ass. And that's not a sponsored thing or anything. No. Just by the way, that's literally just something I bought on Amazon. This is going to function, you said? This is actually going to work. Once we bench bleed oh. it. Begin the bench bleeding on a real bench. Wow, that's full. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Got a little excited. <laughs> the key here basically is, again, just push till bubbles come out. And then when the bubbles stop, then it'll start to stream fluid and the piston will get harder to depress. Is it becoming stiff? Not yet. Oh. We're ready to go here. I'm going to pop this guy on, tighten those lines down, and then hopefully we get away without opening up the system. You might notice here that if I try to install this, the rear brake line, well, rear brakes line, uh, runs into the fender well here. And, you know, that's an issue. Um, there's probably ways around it. I know the best way around it. Draw a line here, and there. Mm -hmm. I nicked the line, but it didn't break it. I made an uh-oh. Might have ruined your hard work. Really? I don't know. I nicked the line with a cutoff wheel. I say, why do I smell burnt things? Well, I've been gone for five seconds. But it don't work. It don't fit. Perfection. Well, there you are, sir. I shall return to the wood front. Oh, okay. I'll finish this. Look at this. Look what I have scourged up. I found the long one first. But that would require me to cut it. Instead, I found these two cut-to-length ones, actually. You can get these at the hardware store to install your gas tank. But this one's organic. Yeah, we'll just throw these down in here and put the gas tank on that. Oh, hey, that's full of 12 gallons of gas. Get our reinforcement out of here for now. I will now strategically place the organic trunk supports in such a manner that they will hold this boat tank. Uh, Something like that. We will use two organic chassis stiffening braces uh, because safety. Bingo! It's not, they aren't the most stable things. Uh, we will attach them to what's left of that floor with something. However, I have just received word that the brakes are finished and perfect. So let's see. Absolutely flawless. There will be nothing wrong with this. It looks great in there. And pedal straight to the floor. Oh. What? What? There's no fluid in it. Oh, there's no fluid? Not in one of them. Rear? It's the rear. Well, we don't care about that one. Oh, we're getting some bubbles. I'll just go backwards a little bit. No. Shit. That could have been bad. Yeah, it has uh, zero brakes now. Well, we've effectively made this much worse. Yes, it no longer <laughs> works. <laughs> Why? Why would that even be a thing? Okay, so it was a giant air bubble in the master cylinder. I just popped off the line, put my thumb on it, hit the brakes a couple times, and it I guess we just didn't get a bench blood all the way. Yeah, it's, it actually feels decent. But it's absolutely working now. I can see it working now. You want to try to drive forward? They don't return well, they don't feel that great, but... And they do function? So the problem before with the bad master cylinders, it faded. It's a loss yeah. of pressure. It feels good. All right, that's done. It's fixed. Fixed. Not really, but enough. We gotta go drive like 25 miles? Not far. I think well, it'll be it's... about 60 right now. Yeah, so. yeah. And it's, it's only on gravel. And one um, highway. One highway. Lots um, of stopping. Through town, past... The sheriff's office. The sheriff's office and the uh, courthouses. The game plan here is drill holes, put carriage bolts in to bolt them down. This time on home improvement. <laughs> Want to make some fuel tank straps? Fuel tank straps. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's safety green, so... Right. Cheaper than a fuel tank strap, and that's cheaper than a fuel cell. This is budget, okay? This, this is budget. I am so impressed. We're going to bolt in our stability braces. We have discovered the solution to this. Echo! Hello? Oh, God, yes. But with these scrap pieces of 2x4, we will secure this 
for lateral motion. See, we have the uh, longitudinal motion nailed down tight. I mean, it's actually pretty secure. Not, it's not bad. But we got to get that lateral motion under control. It's I mean, you don't it's, want that. that. Yeah, but it's too much wiggle assist. wobbly. But you take the twist out of her mm -hmm. with these here two by fours, and she's good. And that's it's <laughs> that's better. better than a lot of stuff we've done. Voila! Installed. Anyway, this is finished. Now we're just gonna go ahead and give it a complete tune-up right here, and also fumigate. Let her sit. We'll let her sit and just kind of eat on the carbon. You've got there. a little bit of an exhaust leak up front there. No, it's fine. What makes you think those were? Oh, that's uh, that's already separating. I mean, it's I probably shouldn't have my face near it with full air pressure in the tire. Hey, that air's been in there since 1987. It doesn't even roll straight. Oh, no, no wonder this thing drove so packed. So I do think that will fit because on the inside of the wheel it has a recess. Or it, or it will not at all. It won't. Oh, it does have a giant donkey yep. hub, doesn't it? Yep, it won't go over the hub. Okay, so we have a plan, and it's not a good one, but it is a plan. So we took my trailer spare tire, because it was the only thing that would fit this car, because it has a gigantic hub. Uh, for the rear, we do have some spares, but they're all garbage. And, you know, as we kind of showed you earlier, these tires are bad. Uh, like, really, really bad. Anytime you have to make a decision, always choose steer tires first. And that's what we're doing here. This is the spare tire out of this car. It is a Sears Road Handler 78. And uh, it looks, well, I mean, to be fair, quite a bit better than this tire. So we're going to go ahead and throw that on. And we'll keep that one for a spare. We'll throw three more spares in the back. And then we'll go hook up to a trailer and haul that home. They don't know that yet. Oh, crap. Everything here looks great. You can tell the brake's been working. Yeah, that was the only one that did. Mm-hmm. Look at that ball joint. Look at all the grease that is around that ball joint. That's almost as good as putting it in the ball joint. I mean, that's probably what's holding it together. That's why we're not touching it. This might come as a shock to you, but I really don't give a f <laughs> What the hell is a radial 78? Yeah, but a 78 is a bias ply size. But it says it's a radial. Right there, Sears steel belted radial tire. GR7815. So it is. That it, is a bias GR, ply. no, GR. Radial. Oh, radial. It is a radial, but that's standard size. This is pre-1980 then. Just load the spare <laughs> tires. Don't worry about... Uh, did the carburetor actually fall through the floor? We have to trade these for that trailer. Oh. Whenever you run seafoam or anything like that down the throat of a carburetor, you want to rev it up like we did, and then let it sit for a little while. And that lets that stuff kind of sit on the you know, face of the piston and something magic. And then you start it up and blow it all out the exhaust. So let's do that. See? Just like that. What the hell's wrong with it? I don't know. It's not happy. More gas? What happened? Get any fuel now. Boat tank. Check the vent on the boat tank. Maybe it sucked itself into a vacuum. I don't know how that's supposed to really vent, but I just cranked on it with the fuel line off of the carb, and it just splooged all kinds of crap out of it, which is bizarre considering we're running off a boat tank. It has a new fuel pump, all new rubber hoses, but it is running on the original metal line, which could be it. But uh. I think safe bet to assume that that fuel filter just coincidentally plugged up on the car. This is 
the fuel filter on a motorcraft car. So maybe we'll pull that off, at least try to blow through it with some brake cleaning. Try again. Ew. Oh my gosh. Damn, that thing's. Whoa. How the hell was that even working? And working pretty good. Yeah. This looks pretty clean. It looks pretty clean now. I don't know if they're brass or paper in there. I bet they're brass. <laughs> I bet they're brass. In that case, we should just send it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to hook this clicky clack fuel line here and just try to draw. I know, oh, they're supposed to push. Yeah, whatever. It'll work to suck through here. We're going to try to just draw some out and hopefully it's just something in the line. It kind of has to be. I mean, there's nothing else, right? Yeah, it's got to be just in the line. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Jeez. Whoa. Dude. See, when you need to put a container in to suck out fuel, you just remove your battery and it has a perfect tray for it. Who knew? There we go. That's much better looking. Let's let it run for a little bit. At least it's actually clear fuel. Rock the boat. Rock the boat, baby. This is the look of defeat. I just snapped off the fuel filter in the carburetor. Don't do that, boys and girls. Jesus, what a disaster. Got it. Yep. That is victory. Yes. Thank Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's see if we pump some fuel. Oh, uh, battery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not, getting that's, worse. Yeah, it's not getting better. Tomorrow may be this car's last dance. Do we pull the plugs and see, or do we just ignore it and go? It's running way too smooth. Yeah. Ignore it. So, we're going to go take it for a drive. It's dark, but if we come back and live, you'll see. You are the wheel man of this episode, so enjoy. Ah. Uh, it sounds that so muffler, good. man. Woo. We're off to a roaring start. <laughs> Looks like a evening cruise in your convertible. I can already tell this feels better than it did. Okay, yeah, just just get us to the bottom of the hill. That's where the house is. It's dying. Fuel filter again, probably. We're off to a good start. Yeah, so it, it died and it will not crank. The alternator light has been on the entire time we've had this car running since the last video. And it, apparently the alternator's bad. Headlights and cranking on it for a long time Deck murder didn't quick. do it any help at all. No. So I'm off to go walk to my house and go get a battery. I'm going to enjoy the moonlight. Well, it made it back in here. I don't know what the deal is. Obviously, there's crap in the carburetor. Uh, I think we're just going to send it. It is running better now. Uh, we're going to bring an extra battery that I got on the charger. Points will run for a long, long time on a dead battery and really not draw anything. Our test run did pretty good. The brakes function. Car drives a lot better, actually, with those two front tires on it. Uh, than it did the last time. If you remember, it was quite scary. Tomorrow will determine whether this gets some incredibly budget bodywork and paint. Because if it's a good car, if you're a good car, you get paint. You get you get shined up. If you're a bad car, well, we all know what happens to bad cars. What up, players? We have to go pick up that trailer. Is it gonna make it? I don't know, but let's find out. Will it run? Come on. Come on. Right. Oh, extra battery. Oh yeah. That alternator light clearly means nothing. 
The dirt situation is bad. Yeah. I should have brought sunglasses. Yeah, I should have brought mine. It will get better. I think it all just kind of settled back in, you know? I think so. The dust decides to whip around and then go straight in the uh, eye socket. Right. It's targeted. It is targeted. I think it's kamikaze dust bunnies. I need to buy a cigar. <laughs> Big old stogies digging out. That's 60 miles an hour. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad. It, it's quiet as can be. This is the quietest car I think I've, including my cruise. Without having a roof. Without, ha yeah. like just going for a nice cruise through town on a beautiful day. It is awesome. It is gorgeous. Grab the trunk key, you know, to fill her up, of course. Took a little bit of gas. Well, I guess we'll try to keep continuing on. I'm ready. All right. I'm gonna finish my sandwich. Good to go. The seat is falling apart. That's disintegrating. There's pieces of it everywhere. <coughs> We're getting hit by old Pure asbestos. <laughs> Foam. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll be sipping on gin and juice here in a minute. Oh, this is bad. It's getting aggressive in here. It's fine. It will get, it's got to get worse before it gets better. I would assume at some point it has to stop vomiting foam on us. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to happen, but we can think, we can, we I can just, hold. I don't know, she just keeps humming though. It she's, is. She's doing really good. No smells. The brakes are bad. Hey, look, it's your sister. Hey. That one looks a little nicer than this one. Huh. Uh, we got like five minutes left. Uh, I'm holding up an entire wave of traffic. Oh, oh, oh get past. Goodbye. Big truck. Jesus. Wow. I mean, that's impressive. It really is. That's heavy. That is probably 10,000 pounds gets to you. Well, it's starting to wobble a little worse. So I'm really, I'm trying to save. Uh, oh, the I didn't notice the wheel was moving as much as it is. Yeah, it's really bad. I've just been ignoring it. I guess I've been oblivious. I've been enjoying the ride. Exactly. You know, you'll die and you won't know it. That's the way I want to go. <laughs> well, I believe we lost a tire. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think we found the problem. Is it bad? Yeah, it's not good. Okay, we are literally two miles from where we need to go. Hmm. Hmm. Let's check her out. Well, it's gone. Is it gone? Gone. It's not gone. Gone. But it didn't survive. I'm glad we brought spare tires. Oh, oh. I mean, it's still there. Oh, hell. Well, I gotta go two more miles. Well, uh, let's change it though. Okay. So here's the deal. If you've got a differential in the rear, you got two tires, right? And you really don't want to run one that's short and one that's tall because the short one will spin faster and then, you know, bad things will happen. In this case, it's an open diff. Probably would be okay, but we're just gonna go ahead and run the same size tire. And this looks great. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and we won't have any problems with this one. No. It was actually the one we took off the front that we chose no. not to drive on before. But now it's going on the back. So, better. So let's get our kit out. <laughs> this is convenience in all the right ways. If this car had a roof, how inconvenient would this be? Exactly. The only way it'd be more convenient if you took everybody's advice and turned it into a ranchero. I know, and I'm really, I'm thinking about it, but I think we need to enjoy it as convertible roadster, sorry, for a while, and then we can convert it. And then it's like having a whole new car. There you go. You get bored with it, make a new car. And this is how you have fun on the cheap, guys, if this is your idea of fun. <laughs> as he struggles to get the jack out. Ah. Hey, the bumper's still here. Oh. Is it not there? Um, it's there, but I don't think it's any worse. Oh well, no, it's always been. Yeah, that way. I don't think it's any worse. That means it's fine. Have you ever pulled this one off yet? No. Only fine. Why would I? Oh. Oh, there's a whole like ecosystem in there. Oh. 
You hate to see that on a brand new set of tires. Call the manufacturer and see if you can uh, yeah, come on. warranty that. El Dorado. Look at the tread left on that. I know. It's like new. Just fell apart way before you got its full life out of it. <laughs> I'm glad that you did put the hubcap back on. <laughs> well, you got to look good. Yeah. I don't want to look like trash. <laughs> oh, no, don't. Wouldn't want to look like trash. Well, let's start. Beautiful. All right, let's hit it. This is Travis. And he sold me that farm truck. We're picking this up with it. And it's a Ford truck bed. It's a really nice bed, actually. Obviously, we have some tire issues with that. End up robbing some tires off of that trailer. Our new scrap trailer is ready to go. Ooh, dude. That's too nice now. Let's hook her up. All right. Come on back. Go to the right. My right? Uh, yeah, you're right. Yep, there you go. Um, right there. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I think it'll be a good thing. I think, yeah, you're yeah. probably right. And then yeah. just pull that one off. Our first load. Come back, a little more. Right there. Perfect. Made for it. Oh. oh. Hey. Oh my god. Oh. Hey, that tongue moved a little bit. Did it lower so much yep. that the block won't come out? It well. Oh, oh no, oh, it's perfect. Fine. Well, you have a 1970s rake on the trailer bed. And what? <laughs> it is sitting like this. this yeah, that's definitely, definitely the, what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like. Yeah. New plan. We're going to put ballast in the trailer to even it out. You know, take all the tongue weight off of it. I hear they drive much better that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but now we can carry a lot of tires. Yeah. I think these, uh, were these things made for putting gas tanks or spare tires? Right, these they might be spare tires. It does look like a jerry can holder. Yeah. This is easily one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> God, that's ridiculous. It looked okay. It, it didn't feel any weirder and it stopped fine. Now this. This is open air motoring. <laughs> this is. You know, I could just about crawl into the trailer. It's so tall. It is extremely tall. There's oh. a, what was that? That was a piece of the wire off of that trailer thing that tractor was pulling. Oh, our tires can't take, that's the good tire. We gotta save that one. I trust those brakes more than I. They're working pretty well. Really? Yeah. It sounds like it. I don't sound like it. Not popo. No popo. Popo bad. Now, here's where things might get hairy. 40. Third gear. Curve ahead. Looks pretty stable. 50 miles an hour. Yeah, Feels all right now. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a shake, but I don't think it was any different than it was no. before. It's not wandering. Oh, look at the air pocket in the back seat. Oh my God. <laughs> 
excess yeah. amounts of foam. Of stuff. Huh. I think we need to eliminate. Well, they sell blankets at Family Center. Boom. Everything we need. Oh, good. The sheriff's station. I'm sure they won't mind any of this. Well, it made it here. We can go grab something to eat. Uh, there is no break left over here at all. Uh, maybe I should have bought pads. Maybe. Hmm. But if it passes this test as flawlessly as it's going so far. Then, then it gets pads. I think it gets pads. It earned it. Yep. It earned a little more love. So now that the brakes are gone, I get to drive. I yeah. see. Yeah, it's uh, totally up to you to save our lives on the way back. Dude, I did buy that and an electric rat zapper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I will say, don't put this on with a plastic bag still around it. You can't I breathe I think well. there's a label for that. Totally normal. There's a really low bridge up here. Uh, wow, that break is long. Yeah. Oh. They can't stick if it's uh, gone. So, yeah. I mean, that's a plus. They don't stick if they're non-functional. Exactly. This bridge is pretty low. 10 foot? 14. Oh, uh, 14. 14 is fine. Yeah. Although the thing does stick up pretty tall. Don't think it's 14 foot tall, but still pretty tall. I'm gonna send it. Plenty of room. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Chop. Hand signals. That means stopping. I have no insurance. We're going to the place where dreams are made. Our local farm and home. Behold, the greatest store on earth. You can get everything you need to rebuild your car right here. Look at that. Look at that. Five bucks. Tell me that's not seafoam. Break clean. They Good break clean. Yeah, their antifreeze is seven bucks for 50 50, but they usually have it straight for nine dollars. But even that full strength extended life, $10. But here's what we're really here for. Van Sickle Tractor Paint, which if you've seen JD's car, is pretty damn good stuff. So what kind of color are we thinking? We got... Gloss Ford Red. Oh, that's a good looking color. Yeah. So they are out of Hartner, and that is really unfortunate because that's the key to my success with tractor paint. But you can shoot it without it, and I guess we'll see what happens when you do that. So uh, you reduce it with naphtha, thin it out. You know, the good thing about this is we can put everything in here. It truly is the ultimate grocery gift. This is the greatest thing ever conceived of. <laughs> but I think we can install that seat cover and maybe keep some of the asbestos out of our face. We got the stylish Mexican blanket here. It's going to look good, and we'll just cover that up, and then... We'll have a much more pleasant death when the brakes fail on the way home. See a lot of other YouTube channels upholster seats in a parking lot? I don't think so. And well, the trunk key is key. You could use it to remove the fuel lines, upholster the seats. I mean, it's everything. Look at that. Totally reupholstered. It's practically new. new. Covers, huh? Right. Absolutely. He pick him up here at Farm and Home, of course. Come on, man just better and better. Mm -hmm. It is actually running better the more we drive it. Oh, much better. Those brakes, though. Wow. Hello. I don't care. Millennials. <laughs> they don't know how to live. This is living. This is living. We are both millennials. Yeah, <laughs> we actually <laughs> are both. Oh. 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 God. You can feel the car shudder now. Oh, there's rivets on metal, and that's it. But it still doesn't squeal. Yeah, I hate squealing brakes. There are so many cars back there. Holy crap. There's got to be 10. There's 15. at least 10. They're still coming around the corner. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, there's 15 cars. We're out here to aggravate the masses. We are nearly home. Just a few more miles. The tires are failing. You can feel it lumping, lumping along. We'll take it real easy and maybe we make it, but we'll let you know if we don't. 
But I must say that this is open air motoring at its finest. How do you get better than this? I mean, this car is America in a nutshell. We, uh, we are now, engine is dying. It's dead. Can you make it into that? Oh. I'm going to go for the library. Okay. Hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. She's out of fuel, I bet you. Fiddlesticks? Yeah. <laughs> we are not out of fuel at all. The gauge still reads under full. And okay. that's I don't not know if you can see it on the side, but you can see it sloshing around in there. Yeah, right here. Yeah, it's barely used any. Yeah. Okay. So. Under the hood we go. Something else has happened. Well, let's see if we got any gas up here again. Yes, it does. All right, now I'm going to have him start it. He's going to hold it up, and then I'm going to choke the engine off with my hand, and that's going to theoretically force crap to come out of the Venturis. That sucked hard. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Yeah, we can do that. But I think it's simple as that, though. That's not bad. Hell, it runs better than it did. Yep. All motors were made to run wide open. You're at all honestly times. probably not wrong. Uh, the hard throttle all that way. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how little fuel we've used. I know this thing's. Well, it died again, and now thankfully I stopped. But. We'll throw our spare battery in it, and maybe that fixes it? Alright, I've beaten it. Things have escalated. <laughs> That's better. Much, much more room. Yeah. We got all the screws out. But he's gonna clean it off so we don't dump anything in there. And maybe soften up the gasket. But uh, now is the moment of truth. Let me get the trunk key. Oh, it just popped right off. Huh? It just popped right off. Oh, perfect. So you're still attached on the choke linkage, but it should just swing over. Got it. Boom. Pull the fluid it out. It is full. It's full of gas? No, it's empty of gas. Full of shit? Full of shit. I guess we can crank on and see if it fills up. This one should theoretically run with yeah, that Yeah, these, these will run without the top plate. We cranked on it. No fuel came into here. And Cody said you can see the needle moving. So it's not that. It's the filter. It's got to be. Well, she must have sucked up another load of varnish, huh? Look at that crap that just came out of there. That's all it was. That's all it was. Just another load of crap out of that line. Let's see if she'll fill back up now. Maybe the fuel pump did. The fuel pump died? I think it might have. Okay, well that didn't work. We're down to uh, what? Fuel pump, Chinese fuel pump, very likely. And or plug oh. fuel line. Oh. Then I just dumped fuel all over the car. Yeah, whatever. But we were thoughtful enough to bring the clicky clack. So we'll put that in line back here, run it off drill battery, try to push it forward. If it doesn't come out and keep running, then we know that it's the fuel line. Fuel, yeah, if it's not coming up there, it's got to be. Fuel line. With how nasty this is looking, it's very possible that it is fuel line. All right, got you it. hook that up. I'll go pop it off the car. I mean, it should. There yeah, it there it is. It's Chinese fuel pump. That's the problem. All right.
It made it. No other issues on the way home. So, I think, obviously, we need to address, I think the carb needs clean. We need to do that. I think we're just going to leave the clicky clack in the trunk and I'll mount it permanently and just run on that. I don't I think it'll be just fine. That's what I would do. So, uh, I think tonight, I'm going to start scratching her up and maybe we uh, paint her Massey Ferguson red. Right. This is my SA Chase. One dog. And we have our supplies. We are going to do a scratch and shoot on this bad boy. And this is probably the most important part of that process. This other stuff's kind of secondary. Basically, all we're going to do here is take some of this 220 sandpaper. All you got to do for this kind of thing here is make it stick. Kind of, mostly some of the time. Basically you work in nice little strokes like this. Use your palm and just scuff it up. As long as it's got scratchy scratch marks in it, it it'll stick. It's tractor paint. Big dent right here. There's not a whole lot I think I can do about it, but let's see if there's anything at all. Take a tool here. Open that up. I want to work through here. Pop that dent. Well, that's as good as that gets. On to the deck lid. We've all seen this big lump of the deck lid here, and it's just terrible. Now, with one well-placed strike from this ball-peen hammer, I will fix this. With two well-placed strikes from this ball-peen hammer. With three well-placed strikes from this ball-peen hammer. <laughs> other things. Ugh. You can see it's not good, but it is better. And uh, that's pretty much all we're shooting for here. I am going to use a DA with a little sandpaper on it to remove this duct tape residue off of the car on the back where they have those tarps taped on. Chase is proceeding nicely over here. Nice and scuffed. So the duct tape residue on this thing is really, well, kicking our asses. Uh, this stuff has been on here since approximately the Civil War. And it's just goo. So we're going to be dealing with that for a bit. Probably jump in with you after the car's all scuffed up and ready to be pretty. It is scuffed, sir. I think we are good to go. We're going to blow it off. We will mask it off, including masking off the interior area. And uh, that is a monumental task. Basically, masking off an entire football field of chrome. Well, we are pretty much masked off. What I'm doing now is using a little wax and grease remover. And that's going to remove any surface oils, handprints, stuff like that off of the surface. However, this is a good teaching moment here. See, if you're going to half-ass something, you got to know how to whole-ass it, you know? You can't do something wrong until you know how to do it right. And, uh, you know, this is one thing. If you skip this, you know, you'll pay for it. Now, ready to paint. Now, before you paint something, it's critical that you have a clean and well-organized workspace with no oils or any dirt or chemicals in the area. You know, you need it very clean. Always keep a safe environment with no spark or flame while handling paint. And it's, ooh, dude, that's red red. I will have to reduce this paint with naphtha. Basically, naphtha is boiled gasoline, I think, and uh, you can yeah, you can actually use gasoline to reduce this paint too. That's how good it is. So I'm gonna sit here and mix this for a while. And I'm gonna just dump it straight into my paint cup, and I'm just gonna pour that naphtha in there until it just runs off the stick, just right. No need for strainers or anything like that in this kind of high quality operation. Moment of truth, though. Ugh. Okay, well, um, jeez. 
I mean, it could have been worse. At least I put the towel down. We're just, it's usually like 10%, I want to say. I don't think there's an actual mixing ratio for it. And you want it to just run off of that stick. So you want it to run maybe a second or two and then drip. Is what I normally shoot for. It's just a hair thick still. Why is everything I do a complete disaster? And again, we have no hardener. That's good, right there. So this, the reason we're spraying it tonight is because it's probably going to need at least a whole day to dry uh, because there's no hardener to catalyze the paint. So I, I've never actually shot an actual color with no hardener. I've done black and it worked okay, but we'll see how this goes, I guess. So I'm shooting with a siphon feed gun here, and that means there's a cup with a siphon in it. I prefer these over a gravity feed gun. I don't really care what people say these days. I think they're better. So, ha! When you pull the trigger about halfway, you want to shoot at about 45. That's way too much, but it seems to like it. This is your fan adjustment here. It determines the pattern. If you turn it all the way to the right, you get a real tight pattern. Left loosens it. This is volume control. This, if you loosen it, it allows more paint to come through as opposed to air this tighten it you got more air less paint usually you kind of want to go kind of fat on those and then whenever you lay your strips on i always start on the upper surface start at the end ah. start at the beginning and go all the way to the end then you want to do about a 30 percent overlap Now, red is super transparent. It's gonna to be totally see-through on the first coat. That's normal, uh, and a lot of colors are like that. Uh, so, you put the first coat on real dry. I mean, if you see through it, that's good. Come back, hit it with a medium coat, maybe another medium coat, and then layer on wet if you got a single stage paint like this tractor paint. Because however you lay it on when you're done, that's how it's gonna look. Well, there it is, the final coat of paint. It looks good, there's a couple runs in it, but it is like 45 degrees or so. It's a little too cold to be doing this, especially without a catalyst, but it doesn't look bad. I, don't get me wrong, it looks you know, better on camera than in person. Not bad. If I'm talking weird, that's because after a 12 pack, painting a car, your whole perspective on life just changes. I'll just leave it at that, but good morning. It's still here. The paint doesn't appear to have died any. It's still nice and shiny, but it's not dry. It's still tacky, and that's the problem of not having the hardener in the paint. Uh, we're not gonna be able to do anything with this probably all day, but we can maybe start to unmask it. Um, there's a lot of dirt in it, like, a lot of dirt. I don't know why. I also don't care. Prep work was a little lacking for some reason. Is there anything more satisfying than unmasking a car? That yeah, looks better with the bright work exposed. Uh, obviously we need to put a lot of the trim back on the car, but I can't really do that until it dries. One thing I didn't do was paint the rockers of the car. And that's because I ran out of masking tape. And that's the kind of high dollar operation this is. So what I'm gonna do is just paint them black under here and they're gonna look just fine. And I'm just gonna hold this cardboard up here on the trim, hose that down, boom. I didn't bother with this because, well, it's pretty trashed. So some uh, satin black will cover that up real nice. Now I'm gonna pull it out just to let the sun kind of bake it, you know, because it's not wanting to dry and I need it out of here quicker than that. So it might get some dirt in it, oh no.
The good thing about a crap paint job is they always actually look better in the daylight. I mean, in the sun, this thing looks freaking great. And, you know, if you say you would be embarrassed to drive this, you'd be lying. Look at that thing. It looks awesome. And it costs $65 to do that, okay? And a 12-pack of beer. That is part of the requirements. Look at that. It's got a great gloss to it. As long as it dries, and the thing is, I know it would dry if I just had the damn hardener, but, you know, they didn't have it, and that did save me 35 bucks, so, you know, blessing and a curse. Let's go ahead and pretty this up the rest of the way. We're going to put the trim back on it now that the car's sat outside for a while, and it is dried at the touch. It's not cured, I, you know, it. Uh, if you were to get it wet or anything, I'm sure it would just peel right off. Some of it might clip back on, most of it's not going to, but that's okay, because we'll just shoot a self-tapper into it. Have you ever wondered how to straighten your bent stainless trim? Me too. Mm-hmm. Yep. She looks a lot better with the trim on her. Kind of hides that cut edge there. Maybe not very good, but it does hide it indeed. Much better. A little update. Me and Dad have totally safetified this thing with duct tape. It's totally safe now. And it's got chrome. I mean, it's really coming up in the world. And the upholstery's finished. Got that out of the shop. And, you know, that is something. And with that, I think that's a wrap on the 72 LTD Roadster for this episode of Pole Barn Garage. If you want to see more on this car, just let me know. I think we could throw some brake pads on it. Uh, obviously, I gotta get tags for it, and then, then I think she's ready to just hit the open road. Well, a set of tires. But I think tires and brake pads, we're in good shape. So, you know, if you want to see more on it, let me know. Uh, I don't know what else there is to really do, but we'll find something, I'm sure. Remember to hit that like, subscribe, and comment, comment, comment. Leave lots of comments. YouTube likes that stuff. Please, thank you.